Want to take a quick look at Tiny Living? I think you really should meet with this big man and this tiny vehicle, in which he lives 365 days a year, during leap years one day more. I did meet him and asked him many questions. Now, do you, do you meet with uh, people who judge you, who think you're a bum uh, <laughs> or whatever? And where's your kitchen? Well, my kitchen is back here. Uh, you once lived in a house. How long ago was that? And he answered willingly and honestly. Welcome to Bus Meets the Nomadic Dane. So my second guest in this bus meet series is a Danish guy living in his car. First question, who is he? To find that out, let me take you to the annual RTM, the Road Travelers Meetup, in Groesbeek, the Netherlands. Organized by, yes. Where he shares all kinds of tips and tricks with us about living on the road. Afterwards, I invite him in my bus for a ride and an interview. And he accepts. I will, I will easily go to work. So, what is your name? My oh. full name is Lars Po Konjonrak Sons. <laughs> okay. If I may ask, what's your age? I'm 53. 53, okay. okay. I work for a company, uh, I guess it's called merchant merchandising. We, uh, I drive around to, to uh, shops if, if they need new displays of lamps or whatever. It can be anything, not only lamps, but all kinds of stuff. If they need new displays, they call the company I'm yeah, employed yeah. for. Okay. And my boss sent me how to do those okay. kind of things. I heard you once you were a teacher too. Yeah, I uh, used to be a teacher in Thailand. For six years I was an English teacher down there. Well, I, I, um, I'm a Buddhist and uh, this, this lifestyle uh, for me is, is the, the way to obtain the uh, the, the calmness and the the the, the peace uh, well dharma <laughs> okay we're getting a bit of a picture here a 53 year old well educated danish buddhist with a job whose home is a van let's have a look at that home This is it, huh? Yeah. This yeah, is where you live in. Yeah, that's my house. <laughs> it's small. Yeah. This is the right size for me. It's the right size for yeah. you. Yeah. <laughs> because of the Danish tax law, I have to have the the seats in um, these three seats, the one I sit in, and those two here has to be there because uh, in the camber document, the, the tax camber document, it say that those three seats are there. So I okay. cannot remove them. Okay. So I had to make the bed on top of that. So you see the bed actually ends here. And then ah, from here to the, the rest of the way is the top of the seats. 
Okay. But that also means that there's a lot of wasted space. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So. And, and this is your table? This is my table. I got a pipe. <laughs> and it goes in there. Ah, go in there. Okay. And then. And that's my table. Okay. And a fridge? And I got a fridge here. Yeah. I got tired of not being able to keep food fresh, you know, keep one, two yeah, days, yeah, yeah, then yeah. it would go bad. So uh, just recently I bought this fridge and at the same time I bought an inverter, a thousand watt inverter. And I had already a solar panel and a, and a charge, charge controller from my old uh, travel trailer. So I mounted okay. that as well. So. so you've got power as well? Yeah, I got 220 from my inverter. And my inverter is hidden away under the bed. Okay. And so is the, the batteries. I have three, three ADM batteries and 100 amp hour each. Okay. So I have 300 amp hours. And of course, they also charge when I drive. Yeah. I have connected it. So they... Uh, and what, what do, do I see here, down here? What's that? Well, yeah, that's the exhaust pipe from my uh, diesel heater. I got an Espace diesel heater here. Ah. And okay. the, the the heat pipe just runs out under the uh, under my seat in the back, okay. so that I can uh, stay warm. And I installed it here again because of actually again because of the Danish tax law, because in the back of the car is a yeah. two centimeter thick steel plate covering the whole back end of the car. And why is that? Because in Denmark the law is that a camper. Yeah. This is registered as a camber. A camber has to be two ton. And originally this car is only 1600 kilo. So they put 500 kilo of steel in the back end of the car. Ah. And that means that I had to drill through two centimeter of solid steel to get through the bottom of the car. And that's just, okay. that's not gonna happen. And where's your kitchen? Well, my kitchen is back here. But yeah, got a pressure cooker. Uh -huh. It's very, very quickly uh, make a good stew or soup or anything. And without the pressure, you can just boil whatever in it. And then a frying pan and my camping stove. The thing that I absolutely love the most ah, the of my Omnia. kitchen set, you know, my Omni oven. And actually, this here was a Christmas gift from my boss last Christmas. Okay, so that's how much my boss respects my way of life. So, and what's with the chair? The chair? Yeah, show me the chair. <laughs> well, at the moment it's actually down here, let me get it. Hold on just a few seconds. I've decided to insert the needy stuff here and then not bother you with it anymore. So here we go. Subscribe if you like and turn on the bell. Okay then, back to business. Well, I'm a big guy and uh, because I'm a, a bit heavy, huh? I went to different shops to find a camping chair. I thought something like the one you see over there, just the foldable uh, cheap stuff, but they can't tolerate my weight. I'm too heavy. And this and one can? At a thrift store, I found this one. Where, at a? At a thrift store, a secondhand store. Ah, okay. Yeah. I found this it's one. It's steel. And it's it's steel, it's good old steel and uh, with wooden handles and it's super strong, but also way heavier than it should be. But well, this will uh, carry me. VW Charan. And um, it's, um, some people would say that it's a small, a small camper, but uh, as I say, for me, it's, it's plenty enough, really. I got all the space I need. I got room for my bed. I got room for a place to sit. In a small home like this, you have to use every possible uh, space. space for storage. Uh, so you minimize your life. Oh yeah, that too. That too, <laughs> big time. Well, yeah, he minimized his life. But why did he do so? But I reckon that 
that you once lived in a house like most people. That's true, yeah, I did. I did. Uh, I rented a house and, yeah. Okay, and, and how long ago was that? That is uh, almost five years ago. So you live in your little van for five years now? Well, the first, the first two and a half years, yeah. I was actually living in my travel trailer and uh, pulled by a Skoda Octavia. Okay. Can you tell me something about that decision? Yeah, it's... Um, so I, I just rented a house and uh, stayed there and uh, worked a normal job in a home improvement store as a salesperson. And, uh, yeah, it was pretty traditional. Came home from work one night and you know, cooked my dinner, went into the living room and sat in the pot-shaped hole in the sofa and yeah. watched telly and ate my dinner and was thinking. The other end of the living room, I had not been over there for two weeks. So I kind of had this thing, I said, why do I have all this space? I don't need it. You know, it's, it doesn't make sense. So I went around the house and had a look and it was just... I guess I came to the conclusion that the, the amount of space in the house that I used was maybe 10%. Of course, I used the kitchen. I used half of the bed. I had a big double bed, you know. Uh, and, and it just didn't make sense. Okay. So I decided to do something else. And um, now, uh, let's go back these five years. Now, you, you, you must have had some expectations of that life yeah. that was ahead of you. Did it come through or is it totally different? I think it pretty much came through actually, it did. Now let's have a look at what that life is about. I stay in different places every night and, uh, and I go to a lot of new places that I didn't know, and I, I okay. you could say I rediscovered my country. Ah, okay. And, and found out how beautiful my country is. Okay. I'm about to say the only times I stay at campsites is when I'm in the Netherlands. Okay. Because uh, back in Denmark, I, uh, I stay in the forest, I stay at the beach, I stay wherever I find a place to boondock. Boondocking? Yeah. Wild camping? Yeah, exactly. Okay. You know, uh, and I got everything I need and uh, I can stay in, in nature uh, at least a week. Okay. So, uh, that's, that's kind of a thing, you know, when I drive I always look if there are good places to park. Uh -huh. And in Denmark, you know, the, the rules are different, so I basically can park anywhere. I always have this going to look for, for places to park. Is it, um, is it allowed in Denmark, boondocking? Uh, Sleeping in your it's, car? It's kind of a gray zone because there's no law against it, but there's no law saying that you can. So it's. Okay. But I've done it for five years, and well, in five years, only one time a police officer told me to, to leave. And, well, I guess he had a bad day because he was in a very bad mood. So I yeah, kind of yeah, yeah. felt sorry for him, you know. Uh, and I drove for 10 minutes and parked somewhere else. I prefer to stay uh, near water, near the beach. But if I can't find a place near a beach, I stay in the forest. Okay. But of course, every now and again, I have to do uh, stay in, in in the city, and I do urban camping as well sometimes. Urban camping. Okay. Yeah, yeah you're you're kind of stealth. Yeah. Well, nobody I, I recognizes it as, no, a, as no. a camper van. I cover the windows in the back with with some uh, black uh -huh. uh, window covers and put a blanket between the drivers cabin and the bag so no one can see I'm there so okay. no one notice now what I really want to know is about other people I mean Do you work? I, 
It must be lonely sometimes. Not really. No. Not really. No, I, I don't feel lonely. Um, I guess I'm a bit of a, what do you call it, introvert. I, uh, yeah. I enjoy uh, being alone. I enjoy being in nature and uh, just uh, the silence, the solitude. It's, it's. Uh, I think that's great. But of course, I also have. I have friends who's not uh, RVers, who are not uh, nomads, and uh, I go to visit my friends every now and again, you know, and and hang out with them. Mm -hmm. You don't understand how a lifestyle like that can give peace of mind because he say every night you have to worry about where to park uh -huh. but for me that's not a worry that's uh, that's i find it exciting and 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 uh, yeah it's it, it, it gives me freedom i see it as a fact of freedom that i can stay wherever i want <laughs> The only people who don't understand my lifestyle is my parents. They don't? No, they don't. My dad keeps saying, uh, my dad keeps asking me uh, when I'm gonna move back into a house. And, and I tell him it's not gonna happen. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Are they getting used to it now? Yeah, of course they are. Let's be honest here, it's a, it's a, a, it's a peculiar lifestyle. Yeah. Now, do you do you meet with uh, people who judge you, who think you're a bum uh, <laughs> or whatever? Um, no, actually not. That's okay. the, that's the strange part of it because I expected I would. Yeah, I totally expected that. But when I talk to people and they find out that I live in in uh, the Raven. First of all, they're very surprised that it's possible to live in a small vehicle like that. Uh, and then they're like, that is so cool. Yeah, last summer I traveled with my daughter in, my, uh, in the Raven. Hey, is it, uh, I mean, we, we've seen your, your car. You don't have a lot of stuff. No. But you don't have a lot of space either. No. Is it possible to squeeze her in? Oh yeah, yeah. I had the, the bed made so it could be pulled out. So it was twice the width. So the entire back end of the Raven was one big bed. Ah, okay. Ah, big, maybe the wrong word, but <laughs> you know. Uh, and uh, they big, big in your world. In my world, big, okay. yeah. So yeah, moving stuff around, but then it's fully possible. <coughs> and when she uh, when she went back to to the US. After three weeks, he told me it was her best vacation ever. Oh, okay. So uh, that's a compliment. Yeah. And actually, she told me that she thinks that her dad is cool. Sorry, cool. Yeah. Okay. She thinks that I'm cool. cool. And how many, how many dads of fifteen-year-old daughters are cool? Yeah, <laughs> are yeah, cool. yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and do you ever long for someone to? Uh, share your tiny little life with. Mm -hmm. I'm, I'm looking very much forward to sharing it with my uh, with my daughter. Uh -huh. The fact that she wants to be a van dweller as well. <laughs> the fact that she wants to be a van dweller as well really makes me happy and. Uh, Yeah, and, and, and it might sound strange, but it makes me proud. Okay. Give it away, and yeah. You know, because in the beginning I had stuff both in the car and in the and in the travel trailer. trailer. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And then of course again when I moved into the net. You had to Raven, downsize again. I downsized once again. Yeah. yeah got to the conclusion that stuff doesn't make you happy. Can you describe what what you think your life will be like then? Five years ahead, probably still doing the job I do now. In two years my daughter will come from US to start, uh, she wants to study in Denmark. My daughter wants to do the same thing at the same time as she study at university. 
and so, then she wants to own her own van. She wants her own van. Okay, so uh, my plan is that I'm gonna buy a piece of land with an old house, just, you know, run down, totally wrecked old house. Then we're gonna use that as our home base. Both my daughter and I, we're gonna have our address there. And uh, during the week when my daughter goes to school, she can go to the land and, and stay there. Uh, she also have a dog, so she needs somewhere to ah, to keep her dog while she study. Um, and then weekends we will go uh, boot dogging and enjoy. Just the fact that people should do what they what they feel is right. You know, if if they have a dream, if they have something they want to do. Go for it, and go for it now, because you don't know if you have time to wait. If you wait, a lot of people say, I'm going to do that when I retire. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Don't wait. Go for it now, because you don't know if you're going to reach the age of retirement. Yeah. You know. Life is unpredictable. So... Uh, and good as well. Oh yeah, for sure. <laughs> it is. And then there is, like for every guest, the assignment. Yeah, you have to do something for me. Okay. But I'm, uh, I'm gonna park first. Yeah. There's uh, a blackboard in the in the back. Yeah. Write down a message for my next guest. Yeah. Yeah. I think I got it. You do. Yeah. That's life is good. That's kind of your motto, yeah, your channel as it well. Is, it is. That's. Uh, I finish my videos by saying life is good. Okay. Oh and is life good? good? I think it is. And so he tells us in every single video on his YouTube channel, Nomadic Dane. You'll find the channel in the description below. Well, that's the end of this one. Hope to see you in the next. Bye.